Hi everyone, take a good look at your keyboard. In 99% of the cases, you're going to see a QWERTY layout. However, if you're like me and if you're interested in tech and computers, you probably know that there are alternative keyboard layouts, for example, Dwork and Colmac. Thing is, QWERTY wasn't exactly made to be the best keyboard layout out there. When the first typewriters were developed, they all had this problem where if you would press two adjacent keys in rapid succession, they would jam and that would be really annoying. So the engineers came up with the QWERTY layouts, in which most frequent key pairs in English are placed quite far from one another to prevent key jamming. And then this guy named August Dwork came up with his vision of what perfect keyboard layout should be and he called the layout Dvorak, which is not narcissistic at all. Dvorak claimed that his keyboard layout increased typing speed and comfort and reduced the wrist strain. And in theory, that's what it should do, because a lot of popular words in English can be typed only using home row. And the less your fingers move and curl in all kinds of awkward positions, the less typing stress you get. However, in this video I don't want to focus on the history of QWERTY and Dwork and reasons why we're all using QWERTY now and not Dwork. There's a really good video by Tech Quickie, which I'm gonna link here. Wrong. And which you can watch if you're interested in how the whole thing basically came to be. In this video I want to focus on my personal experience of using Dwork keyboard layout and probably tell you why you shouldn't bother to learn it. So I learned about Dwork by conducting extensive internet research, of course. And even though learning a new keyboard layout seemed like a huge hassle to me, I decided to go for it because at the moment I didn't have to write big pieces of text and I decided that if there's any moment in my life in which I would like to make myself more productive by learning a superior keyboard layout, that's gonna be it. And I'm not gonna lie to you if I'm gonna say that the learning process was painful. <laughs> I use a website called learn.dvorak.nl to have very cool tools for learning Dvorak. Basically you have five step program or something and you start with just eight keys in the home row and then you go up to the whole Latin alphabet. All in all it took me about a month or maybe a couple of months to regain my usual typing speed and to feel comfortable with the new layout again. So was it worth it? Yes and no. Let me explain. I wouldn't say that typing on Dvorak is noticeably faster than typing on QWERTY, however, it's definitely more comfortable. You see, in QWERTY there's a lot of words that, you know, you have to type with one hand doing those awkward finger movements, for example, minimum. Just try and type minimum in keyboard. On Dvorak, I noticed that there's much less awkward finger movement going on, and in general, vowels and consonants are separated from each other, which makes you alternate your hands much more often than you would in QWERTY. And yeah, I almost forgot to mention that the work is basically designed for touch typing, and if you're more of a hunt and peck kind of person, please learn touch typing. <laughs> so yeah, the work is probably not much faster than QWERTY, it is however more comfortable, what about disadvantages? There are unfortunately plenty of them. The first one that comes to mind is keyboard shortcuts. All of the main keyboard shortcuts are basically scattered all across the keyboard on Dvorak and you can basically forget about using Ctrl C, Ctrl V and Ctrl Z with your one hand. On Dvorak it's probably gonna be a two-hand affair or if you're a fan of it, a very awkward one-hand movement. On macOS there is a keyboard layout called Dvorak CMD QWERTY, which solves the problem by basically switching your keyboard back to QWERTY every time you press the command key. And on Windows, the same functionality can be added by using tools like Auto Hotkey. On Linux, however, there's not really a good way to do that as of yet because of XORG limitations. So yeah, there's that. Oh, and also if you're a Vim user, prepare for a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Some Vim users go basically as far as remapping all the Vim keys back to QWERTY when they use Dvorak. However, I decided to not do that because it breaks compatibility with default Vim setups, which you might still encounter, for example, if you need to log in to VPS or something. I've been using Dvorak with Vim without remapping a single key, and you know, it's, it's not that bad to be honest. You know, you, you get used to it. And then also there are issues with other languages, for example, French and German. The thing is, Dvorak was designed with English in mind. So basically, all the talk about how most used symbols are in the home row and how your fingers don't move much because of that, 
is true for English, but not necessarily for other languages which have completely different uh, words. And then also there are special symbols, accents, diacritics, all that stuff. And actually in Linux there is a keyboard layout called Dvorak International, which adds all of those special symbols. But as someone who has to type a lot of German text, I gotta tell you, those symbols are in really uncomfortable places. Which is why I customized the layout on my machine a little bit to suit my needs. I added some umlauts and special symbols. I'm gonna include that file in the description. Just in case you're German, you type in Dvorak and you struggle with umlauts, the chances are low, but just in case you're there. One more thing we'd like to talk about is mobile devices. On Android, a lot of keyboards actually include the Dvorak layout as an option. However, on iOS, it's nowhere to be seen, which is pretty weird considering how Apple seems like a huge proponent of Dvorak, but to be fair, I kind of understand why they did that. The whole point of Dvorak is placing most common characters in the home row where your eight fingers can reach them. And on, on your phone, you would usually type with your thumbs, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So then, wrapping up, is Dvorak better than QWERTY? Maybe. You see, QWERTY wasn't designed with a typing confidence in mind, whereas Dvorak was. So even if all the researches made by August Dvorak are wrong and Dvorak is not actually that much more comfortable than QWERTY, you can kind of agree that a keyboard layout that is designed for typing comfort will be better than the one designed for, you know, keys being far from each other. Would I recommend Dvorak to anyone? No. Definitely not. <laughs> First, it might be better than QWERTY, but it's not that much better. QWERTY is actually not that bad, and for most people that don't type 8 hours a day without taking a break, it will be enough. And considering the disadvantages of work, for example, keyboard shortcut mayhem, troubles for Vim users, and have I mentioned games? Well, you can imagine what happens if you launch a game and you try to use WASD keys. You're not gonna have fun with that, I promise. <laughs> And just the sheer amount of time you have to spend to actually learn Dvorak probably will be a deal breaker for most people because most people have lives and they use the computer every day to work, learn and, you know, type text in general. So unless you're a hipster like me that, you know, tries to do stuff differently just because... Nah, you probably should learn Dvorak. And by the way, yes, I still use Dvorak because once you went through the hell of learning it and adjusting to new keyboard shortcuts, it's actually not that bad, you know? Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. If you have any experience with using an alternative keyboard layout like Dwork or Colmac, please leave a comment, tell us about your experience. Thank you for watching and as usual, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.